Well, this is Steve Zeltzer with Workweek on KPOO. There's a ship, the Grand Princess, in the Port of Oakland with over a 1,000 crew members who have not been removed from the ship. While the passengers are being taken off the ship, the crew members, many of them uh, migrant workers <clears throat> from the Philippines, over 513 from the, from the Philippines and others, are being told that they have to stay on the, on the ship by, by Vice President Pence. The question is, this ship is a contaminated ship, and shouldn't these workers have the opportunity to leave the ship uh, and their health care taken care of? If this ship sails out to sea with these workers, are they going to be dying on that ship? That's a question we have to ask. And with us on Work Week is Jack Heyman, who used to be an ITF, International Transport Federation, port agent in San Francisco to protect sailors and maritime workers. And he has some experience with the conditions of maritime workers and crew people on these ships. Welcome to Work Week, Jack. Uh, thank you, Steve. So, Jack, why don't you talk about uh, what is going on and the issue of health and safety and protection of workers who uh, crew members who work on these ships? So the Grand Princess, uh, Princess Lines, has a contract with the International Transport Workers Federation, that's ITS. And two of the key contractual provisions are, uh, one, uh, the crew has a right to be repatriated uh, whenever they want. Uh, and also, it's uh, a right uh, in almost all labor contracts that workers uh, have a right to work in a safe and healthy environment. Uh, that's, neither, neither of those provisions have been implemented here, and they're in violation of the ITF contract. So what we're seeing is the passengers are being taken off the ship, the sick ones first, taken to hospitals. The ones that have not tested positive are being taken to military bases to be quarantined and then observed for, I think, a, a couple of weeks, uh, which time they'd be released. Uh, but there's nothing happening with the crew. You have 2,600 passengers on the ship, and there's a crew of 1,150. Uh, they're being forced to stay on the ship. So it, it, in essence, they're, they're actually imprisoned on the ship. They can't, they're not allowed to leave. Uh, we don't know what's happening. That's part of the problem, what's happening to the crew. We know that a helicopter dropped 45 test kits for 2,600 passengers and 1,150 crew members. So they tested 45 people. Half of them uh, were positive. They tested positive. And half of that number were the crew. So uh, we know that the crew is infected. We At this point, we don't know how many. And uh, the main problem is the government is not informing uh, the crew members or, uh, or, or their families. They're keeping them basically in prison. We don't know what kind of medical attention they're getting. We have, it's been out in the media that they are getting medical attention, but you need excellent medical attention to deal with this coronavirus, and that's not happening. The, the medical uh, staff that you have on a passenger ship is nothing comparable to adequate medical attention that's needed. And uh, that, that's some of the key medical issues that are at stake here. And we're listening to Jack Heyman, former ITF port agent, a member of, retired member of ILW Local 10. And we have had some shows with Dr. Larry Rose, who uh, worked at Cal OSHA. Uh, we've just recently learned there's no doctors at Cal OSHA. There's only one nurse, and that's for 19 million workers. Governor Newsom at the press conference uh, a few days ago 
uh, was asked by uh, some of the press who were there why the uh, crew members were not being left off the ship and why they were going to be staying on the ship. Are you concerned that if the ship sails off, that it could be a death ship, that these uh, crew members might end up dead on the ship because uh, their the situation in Yokohama uh, with the uh, Diamond Princess is it became a Petri dish where everyone was being affected? Uh, and I think that's a good metaphor. I think it is a Petri dish because essentially what they're doing is confining the crew on the ship. Now, if they're going to transfer the ship, uh, the ship, shift it to another location, you don't need the stewards department. That's the vast majority of the crew work in the stewards department. That is cooking the food, serving the food, um, cleaning the staterooms where the passengers stay, cleaning, cleaning up the ship, basically. Um, and so they're, they're the ones that really need the attention, and they're not being given uh, the attention that, that's needed. And medical, medical attention I'm talking about. And what do you think the labor movement should do about it? Uh, we need uh, internationalism. I mean, there is probably racism in this because many of these workers are Filipino and workers uh, from uh, third world countries. Do you think that has anything to do with how they're being treated? Oh, absolutely it does. We have a nationalistic president uh, who uh, calls this a foreign virus. The, the, the virus is global. It's in almost every country in the world. And he sends troops down to the Mexican border. Uh, he thinks that's going to stop the virus from coming in. The virus is already in the United States. And if you just heard his news conference tonight, he has no plan for containing uh, the, the virus, the people that are infected. Uh, he's got no plan for eradicating uh, the virus and, and dealing with it in the United States. Uh, so he, he's basically treating the crew like they're on the other side of the border. Uh, and that's why they're not letting him uh, on land. Uh, we've, I've been told that they're getting medical treatment on the ship, but it's obviously not adequate medical treatment that one would get in a hospital. They need to be able to come ashore and be taken to hospitals. That information is not being put out, not to the public and not to the families of, of the crew members as well. So we really don't know what they're doing, but we do know there's not adequate medical staff or equipment on the ship to treat them. So what you have is a crew of 1,150, probably about 90% of them would be working in the stewards department. The other two departments are the engine room and the deck department. So the deck department does the navigating, steering, and so forth. Engine room is uh, uh, they, that's called the blacking. They take care of uh, the power on the ship. Uh, those last two, this, the deck and the engine room, uh, are needed in order to shift or move the ship. But there's no reason to keep the stewards department on the ship. That's probably a thousand crew members should be taken off the ship immediately. They have a right. This is the second right. The first right, of course, is to work in a safe environment. The second right uh, in the ITF contract is you have a right to be repatriated. Um, that's not happening. They, that, a thousand members of the crew have that right, and it's not being implemented. And the trade unions need to step up. The ITF in particular, if you go to their website, there's hardly anything about the coronavirus. There's nothing about the Grand Princess crew and the crisis that they're facing right now. If this situation remains, it's almost certain that some of these crew members are going to end up dying because they're not getting adequate medical uh, treatment. So you have some action as an ITF agent to 
support uh, crew workers on these ships. What was that about? Uh, we had a ship coming into Stockton. This was 1996. I was the ITF inspector, and I'd heard from the seafaring ministry, uh, that's a religious organization that brings on religious material onto the ships, but that's also how the crew gets out its information or gets information and sends their mail out to their uh, family back home. And I was told by the ministry that the crew hasn't been paid in, in six months. The allotments, that's the uh, remuneration. The money that the workers on the ship make is sent back home to uh, help their families survive. Uh, and when that money isn't sent home, then they're depriving the families of uh, food and clothing and, and medical care. So. We, uh, the I, uh, ILWU, uh, which represents the longshoremen in the port, uh, were told about the situation. And uh, the captain of the ship, I went up to meet him, and I, I said, the crew has been complaining that they haven't been paid in six months. He says, well, we made a clerical mistake, but we'll take care of it. Uh, and I said, and half of the crew... Uh, wants to be repatriated. They're dissatisfied with the conditions on the ship. And they are, as a matter of fact, striking. So the captain looks out the porthole, and there's the crew holding up signs, we're on strike, we want repatriation. And I happened to know about this in advance, uh, and I had contacted the Filipino community in Stockton. And so they were having simultaneously a demonstration on the dock supporting the striking workers. And I simply told the captain that it's illegal for the company to withhold their pay. The families are starving back in the Philippines. They need the allotment to be sent home immediately. And unless he signs a statement that that is going to be implemented immediately. Longshoremen will not work the ship. And he looked down the gangway, and the longshoremen were all standing by, honoring the pickets that were down there from the Filipino community. And he immediately signed the statement and resolved the issue quickly. And what that says is that when workers are uh, in a fight, if there's some solidarity from the community and from other workers, because it was the Longshore Union that really made that happen, uh, if you have that kind of solidarity, you can win against these multinational shipping companies. And that's what's needed now. You see, the problem is these crew members are isolated on the ship, uh, and because it's a quarantine situation, it's almost like a, a military situation where you can't get near the ship. And I understand that for uh, medical reasons. But they sh need, the crew needs to be able to communicate, to tell us what they want, uh, and we need to let them know that we're there to support them. That kind of communication isn't happening. I've been in touch with uh, the ITF. They say that the Italian union that represents the crew is negotiating, but they've been negotiating for a week now. And this, obviously a, a disease like this is going to spread in a confined environment like this, or as you call it, a Petri dish. That's exactly what's happening. And so the Italian Union is negotiating. Uh, the I, International Dock Workers Council, that's 100,000 dock workers unions around the world, uh, I talked to them today. They're going to send in uh, solidarity messages to the crew to let them know they're not alone. The International Dock Workers Council will do whatever they can to support the plight uh, of these crew members. So things are, are still up in the air. Nothing concretely has happened to give these uh, crew members 
the opportunity to go home, to be repatriated, and there's no medical attention being given to them right now. So the ITF, the IDC, the Longshore Union, and the other maritime unions in the Bay Area can all start turning the wheels of justice and and get this problem resolved once and for all. It's through that kind of labor solidarity that these crew members are going to get what they need. Okay, well, I want to thank you very much for joining us. We've been talking with Jack Heyman, a uh, retired ILW Local 10 member and former ITF port agent in the the ports of Bay Area. Thanks for joining us on Workweek, Jack. Thank you, Steve.